In this example, we're going to take a look at this function f of x, which appears to be a quadratic function written in vertex form, and we're going to find the inverse of this function. If this is something you would like to try on your own first, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and come on back and we'll find the inverse together. Okay, so one relationship that a function has with its inverse, graphically speaking, is that they are symmetric about the line y equals x. So what that means is we can go ahead and find the inverse by exchanging the x and y in this function. But before we can do that, remember that the f of x is also the y variable. So we can rewrite this using strictly x's and y's. And then we can say, let's go ahead and use this relationship, y equals x, and we're going to exchange the x and the y variables. So now we have x equals the opposite of, and then y minus 5 quantity squared plus 2. And so the next thing we'd like to do in finding this inverse function is go ahead and solve for this y. All right. So it looks like we're going to use a series of inverse operations, the first of which will be to subtract 2 from both sides of this equation. The 2's on the right cancel, and we have x minus 2 on that left side. Of course, everything else will just kind of come along for the ride. And so now we've got this little negative out there that's being multiplied through, and really this is a negative 1, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by that negative 1, so the negatives cancel. And so the right side, I'll have this quantity y minus 5 squared, and on the left side, well, dividing by a negative 1 is kind of the same as multiplying by a negative 1. Really what we're doing is changing the sign of these two things. So instead of a positive x, I'll have a negative x. And instead of a negative 2, I'll have a positive 2. And sometimes we don't like to lead with this negative, so let's go ahead and kind of change the order and say 2 minus x instead. All right. So here is a very important step here. We have this squared quantity over here, and the inverse uh, operation here would be to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And remember, algebraically speaking, when we do this, we need to include a plus or minus on this non-perfect square side. And so on the right side, you know, the square and the square root cancel, so we have y minus 5. On the left side, we have this plus or minus the square root of 2 minus x. Well, that's really weird. What are we going to do with this plus or minus? Well, let's consider something graphically. I'm just going to go ahead and move over a little bit. So when we have y equals the square root of x, so that would be the positive version, it's going to look something like this. And when we have y equals the negative square root of x, graphically it's going to look something like this. So this kind of would be if we had y equals plus or minus the square root of x. The challenge with this is it's not a function. It does not pass the vertical line test, okay, because it crosses here and here. So what's going to happen instead is we're just going to use this principal root, and we're only going to use the positive one. And so we're going to exclude this plus or minus, and we're just going to use the square root of 2 minus x. And so to finish solving for y, let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides. And so we have the square root of 2 minus x plus 5 equals y. And let's go ahead and write this in a function notation because this is the inverse now. So we're going to say the inverse of f of x equals, and remember we have this little negative 1 right here. It kind of looks like an exponent, but it's the notation for inverse function. And we're going to say the square root of 2 minus x plus 5. Okay, so we have now found the inverse function for our original function here. So this is a quadratic function written in vertex form. And we now end up with the inverse function, which is going to be a square root function. And so what we can do is a couple of things. Algebraically, we can kind of verify that indeed they are inverses of one another. And we can do that by taking the original function and, you know, composing it with the inverse. And we should get x. And it doesn't matter if you go that way or 
this way. So you'll see in this case the inverse is inside of the function, in this case the function is inside the inverse, but in either case you should end up with x. So let's just go ahead and do this one. And so we're going to take the inverse, which is this guy, and we're going to substitute it in or plug it in to this function right here, in for the x. Okay, so this will look like it's the opposite of x minus 5 quantity squared, and then plus 2. Okay, so right here in this little area is going to be our inverse function. So we have the square root of 2 minus x plus 5. So we're going to work this out, and hopefully we get x. All right, so inside these parentheses, plus 5 minus 5, okay, well, those guys are going to cancel. And so what I'm left with is the square root of 2 minus x inside this little square. Well, the square root and the square cancel out. But be careful of this minus because he's still there. And so it'll look something like this. When I distribute the negative, it'll be negative 2 plus x plus 2. Yeah, the 2's will cancel, and I'm left with x. So I can see and uh, kind of verify this algebraically that indeed this function is the inverse function for this original one. And finally, uh, to end this video, let's just go ahead and look at the graph of these two functions graphed in the same xy coordinate plane. And I'll also throw in that line y equals x so we can see the symmetry as well.